Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss how to apply the load in Perform 3D. In the previous video the node uh, elements, component properties uh, or elements properties and frame definitions have already been assigned in this model. So today the load pattern have to be defined. So here in Perform 3D there are three types of load pattern. The first one is the nodal load, the second one is element load, and the third one is the self weight of the structure. So in nodal loads, although now we don't have any nodal loads to be import to be the model here to be applied here in this model, but the nodal loads can be applied like this. Let me define some name nodal load, and here uh, there are six load patterns: S1 force, S2 force, vertical force, or gravity force. Similarly, moment and um, three moment vertical horizontal moments. So, if you have to assign H1 force, for example, for in this node one, let me give some value. Let me give thousand newton, and in S2 also thousand, and in B means uh, vertical direction, negative downwards also thousand. So, if we test it, then this load can be applied in nodes like this, as indicated here. So. In this model, there are no any nodal loads, so I can move to self weight of the structure before going to element load. In self weight of the structure, the self weight of the structural element have to be defined, have to be assigned for this uh, model. So let me uh, define the, the name. Self weight, self weight. Then the elements have in. To be included in the self weight pattern like this these are the columns number of columns selected are 32 okay then let me go to beams the beams are also selected in self weight and finally the slabs likewise beam column and slabs are considered as a self weight for the evaluation of the response seismic response of the structure then after that another one is the element load type here in element load the load have to be assigned in the beam as a form of uniformly distributed load. But if we uh, look here in this model, uh, the slab is an area element. But one interesting thing in Perform 3D is that the load of area element have to be converted either into nodal loads or either into uh, UDL loads, which have to be applied in nodes or these beam elements. So the assignment of the slab in Perform 3D is only for the stability of the structure or for the uh, consideration of stiffness problems only. So all the loads, all the uh, gravity loads or area load uh, that can be in the form of kilo newton for meter square unit or newton per mm square unit, they have to be converted into UDL and that UDL can be applied into the respective beams and this load in the slab have to be uh, distributed in the respective four beams, uh, four adjacent beams, and this load distribution in the slab is based on the yield line theory. So, in most of the FEM application, the load distribution from the slab is based on the yield line theory. Also, the design is also, the design of the slab is also based on the yield line theory, in which in which the factor or ultimate load, this factor or ultimate load, uh, load um, method of analysis is uh, called inline uh, analysis theory and it is evaluated based on the bending moment of the structural element at its collapse state. So the bending moment at the collapse state is used for the basis of design and at the collapse load and under reinforced slab began to crack with the reinforcement yielding at the points of high moment either it's a positive bending moments at the center uh, mid span of the slab or it's a negative bending moment uh, around the uh, support zone. So the crack or the yield lines propagate with increase in deflection until the slab is broken into the number of segments. So the main principle of yield line theory is to determine the location of appropriate yield lines, and it is the yield line is the line of the line in the plane of the slab across which the reinforcement bar have yielded and about which excessive deformation or plastic rotation under the ultimate moment continues to occur, leading to the failure of the slab. So here, this is the slab for, uh, with continuous support on all four edges. It means it's a two-way slab. Here, the negative yield lines on the top surface of the beam 
due to the negative moments and the positive moments uh, due to the positive moments the positive will line occurs at the mid span so if we look uh, at the section of this slab here we can see the yielding of negative negative uh, reinforcement is still here in negative zone at the support zone and at the mid span or mid zone there is a yielding of positive moment or positive reinforcement is still or tension is still it means positive bending moment occurs here like this if we draw the simple envelope of bending moment for the slab like this here in the mid span positive bending moment occurs due to the yielding of positive tension is still and in the support suppose these are the support zones at the support zones negative negative bending moment occurs and the negative yielding of steel yielding of steel occurs in negative void negative bending moment occurs so so today we are not going to talk about the design of the slab according to the yield line theory however the load patterns or the load path or the yield line formed in the design of the slab according to yield line theory have to be followed for the distribution of area load from the slab to the beam elements for this we have to know about the nature of the slab either it's a one-way slab or it's a two-way slab so if we look at this figure here um, the length of the slab along the x axis is lx and along the y axis is ly so if lx uh, ratio of LX and LX LY is greater than 2, it is considered as one way slab. And if we look this figure in this figure, the bending occurs in only one direction. It means the slab bend like this. Slab bend like this. They, this is the maximum bending moment and this is uh, uh, the maximum deflection occurs in the central uh, or mid zone of the slab. But uh, if we look in this figure here, uh, the LX is the length of the slab along the x direction and LY is the length along y direction. So the ratio of LX, y, LX and LY is less than or equal to 2. If this ratio is less than or equal to 2, it is considered as 2-way slab and um, the deformation of 2-way slab is shown here like this. It means the bending occurs in both directions. So the, if we draw the bending moment profile for this slab, this one is along one direction and this this one is along the y direction. So this in this way the slab deforms or the bending moment profile if it is a simply supported slab uh, the profile for the bending moment is like this. So Based on the type of slab, the yield line can be generated or can be formed like this. So this is a typical one-way slab. It means the entire load distribution or the load in the entire slab is split equally between the two beams to support the load between the two beams V1. Suppose if the load is W and the individual beam uh, load is W by 2. Or if the total load for unit area of the slab is W, the load transfer to the individual beam V1 is half into LX into LY into W. So uh, this uh, load is changed into UDL uh, to convert uh, in, uh, and is converted uh, into UDL, which is compatible to perform 3D to apply as element load and applied the respective area load of the slab into the uh, adjacent beams as well. So this is the one way slab, the load distribution is like this. If we look into the two way slab, which is rectangular in shape, the load transfer in, to the beam B1 is calculated as follows, as indicated here. And the trapezoidal area into total load for unit area is the load transfer to each of the beam uh, for B1 and for B2. And for B2, the triangular portion area uh, is uh, taken by the B2 beams in both directions. So, if we look at the trapezoidal BCEF, the area of the trapezoid, uh, trapezoid is average length into perpendicular width. It means side EF 
this means EF plus side BC by 2 its average length into this perpendicular length it means CG so after calculation the load transfer to the individual beam B1 is LX into LY by 2 minus LX square by 4 into W so uh, this load uh, this magnitude of load is transfer transferred to this beam 1 and similarly same load is transferred to B2 and for triangular portion this W into uh, the area of this triangle is transferred to the each of the beam B2. So if we look into triangular portion, the load distribution in each of the beam B2 is Lx squared by 4 into W. Similarly, if we have the slab which is square in shape, it is easy. It, uh, we can convert the square, the rectangular shape load into square. It means Lx equals to Ly. It means both the direction the length of the slab is equal so the transfer load in each of the beam is lx squared by 4 into w or ls ly squared by 4 into w if we turn into the calculation part which have to be compatible to apply it to perform 3d here we consider the concrete unit weight is 25 kN per meter cube and the finishing load we have calculated for uh, the uh, float finish is 1.11 and the live load is 3 for balconies, corridor area and 2 for rooms and the roof life load is 1.5 for accessible roof according to the code, NVC code or IOS code. So here the dead load of the slab is calculated and the area of the slab is divided for the beams according to the inline theory the whole area for the slab is divided according to inline theory and the thickness of the slab is 0 0.125 which means um, 5 inch or 125 mm similarly the volume is calculated by multiplying the area into thickness and unit weight is 25 then the load in kilonewton form is 5.613 so the length of the beam along that direction along line grid line 1 AB is 3.5 and divided this point load uh, by this length we got get 1.604 as UDL for this beam for grid line, the beam of grid line 1 AB. Similarly the dead load of the entire slab have been calculated here and if we go to live load, live load is also the same this is the area which we have already been defined and this is the live load we are saying for the rooms and length of the rooms are as uh, beams are as follows and it can be converted into uh, uh, the UGL after um, dividing the load values these load values this multiplication comes in kilonewton and if you divide that resultant value with this length we can get we get this uh, load as kilonewton per meter and please be remember that live load is a factor load which is 0 0.25 in most of the code and in Naples code it's 0 0.3 so the factor live load is calculated here similarly the slab float finish is calculated here like a slab dead load so these all loads came in the form of uniform distributed load in kilonewton per m meter or in the form of newton per mm and we have to sum we have to add this load and um, make ready to apply this load in beam element of our model so here all the load which includes live load factor live load wall load dead load is added here and get the resultant load in kilonewton meter for meter or newton per mm is evaluated here and this load is applied in perform 3d so if we go into the perform 3d model grid line 1 ab we have to assign the 15.960 so the element load for the beams so the load of 15.96 have to be assigned in the beam so let me define new load. I name it dead load plus 0.25 live load. Let me click OK. Then it's for the beam. This one is beam beam grid line 
one and a b if you go for the story one this is beam one a b the grid along the line s2 direction is a b c and along the h1 direction is one two three and four so let me assign the load let me go to the loaded elements here i can select these beams then click on ok means i defined a new subgroup so the subgroup is one assigned is one and let me add load so the load of 15.96 newton mm or mm or kilonewton per meter is the same unit it's a gravity distributed load and here magnitude f1 means it I mean 15.96 F2 also have 15.96 because it's a UDL and L1 by L it means L1 by L if we put 0 it indicates at the starting in I and L2 by L if we put here 1 it indicates the in J so let me click paste okay this is the load of entire slab we have assigned in the beam in the form of UDL. Similarly, all the beams. So let me go, go to another elements, make a subgroup, done. Sorry, both elements have been selected. And I have to delete, delete this. So for shifting into the this beam, we have to make another subgroup. So Go for define a new subgroup. So go to define a new subgroup, select this element, and the subgroup number is two. Let me check OK. Then go to add loads. In this uh, uh, group number one, the load is already been assigned here. Let me go for the two, which have been just assign as a new subgroup then it's a gravity distributed load the load is 18.175 18.175 in both in and it's a zero and similarly it's a one as in previous case and let me test okay and the beam has assigned as a UDL load of 18.175 similarly go to Go to another subgroup definition loaded elements define a new group select this beam done then add load add load in the subgroup number three then this load is 10.089 it's a 10.089 similar so the number of elements selected is one and the number of uh, and it's a gravity distributed load here it's uh, i and j in this uh, l1 by l it's l2 by l the load can be applied in the form of trapezoidal in the form of triangular and now in our case the load is only in the form of uniformly distributed load which comes from the area of the slab or the gravity load that have been applied in the slab and it is converted into UDL and applied in the beams. So let me check and click OK. So similarly, all the loads which we have calculated here have to be assigned in the slab. And in the next video, we will go for model analysis of the slab and evaluate the time period of the structure and compare the time period of the structure with the same uh, model which has been evaluated in Perform 3D. So we will compare the we shall compare the model time period and our other model analysis results in perform today with the types. Till then, stay tuned. Keep watching my videos and subscribe my channel. Thank you.